This is the walkthrough of task two on the second AAT FAPS paper. So 14 marks about recording period end adjustments. You work at an accounting practice working on several different client accounts. Your manager approaches you and tells you she needs the prepaid expenses finalised before the end of today for a specific client. If that is not possible, then you should just leave them out completely. All right, so that's what the manager has said because it's in speech marks. Identify which one of the following is a potential consequence of complying with your manager's request. So the accounts will not, sorry, the accounts will give a true and fair view. Well, no, because if you just leave them out completely, then they don't, so it can't be that. Profit will be understated and liabilities will be overstated. Right, so if I, what is it, prepaid expenses. So if I just miss out prepaid expenses, it means that I've got too much expense in my accounts. Because we know that when we have a prepaid expense, we've, we've already gone debit the expense, credit the bank with the full amount. And then when we do the prepayment, what we're doing is we're taking some of that expense out because it actually relates to the next accounting period. So on that basis, it's profits either going to be understated or overstated. So if I have got too much expense at the moment because I haven't done the prepayment, so too much expense means my profit will be too low, right? So I've narrowed it down to either that second one or possibly that third one. That's what I think will happen to the profit. And then is it that liabilities will be overstated? So if I miss out on a prepaid expense, I haven't gone debit prepaid expense, credit the expense itself. And I know that the prepaid expense bit of that, the debit, is an asset. So if I haven't put these through, then it means my asset will be understated. Yeah, because I'm missing going debit prepaid expenses, which is an asset. And I'm missing going credit expenses, which will have the effect on the on the profit. And that's our think that will be the answer to that one. The financial year ends on the 30th of June X8. Any adjustment for prepaid expenses should be dated. Well, they'll be dated. So I've got a little calendar here to so they will be dated on that last day of June, the 30th of June. The reversal of these adjustments, so that would be the first day of the, the next year. So that would be the 1st of July. Didn't give me year options, but yeah. You receive an email from another client, including the following. The invoice we sent to JS Limited, one of our customers, should be paid at the start of the next financial year. But I have a feeling that they might not be able to pay. Identify the course of action that you should take. So a feeling they might not be able to pay. So it doesn't sound like they're definitely not going to pay. Write off the debt as irrecoverable would be the would be the answer if it said, you know, they we're pretty certain that they're not going to pay. That you've got to look at the wording. I have a feeling they might not be able to pay. So it sounds very doubtful to me. Um, it is a specific customer. So I'm erring towards this one, set up a specific allowance for doubtful receivables. Won't be do nothing. 
And it's not a general allowance for doubtful receivables because it relates to a specific customer. A general allowance would be where you think, oh, 2% are likely to go bad. Don't know which ones it will be, but I better err on the side of caution, be prudent and make that allowance. So, yeah, happy with my answer. You're now working on the accounts of Angela Deering, a sole trader for the year ended 30th of June, X8. You are considering the administration expenses account. The cash book figure is 35,750. This includes, and we've got some information that looks like it's adjustment. So I'm just skimming that at the moment. Complete the administrative expenses account for the year ended 30th of June X8, ensuring it is balanced off appropriately. Enter your answers to two decimal places. Right, so whenever I have to do a, basically an accrual or a prepayment, I know that there's always four steps. So the first step is to look for an, a reversal. Let me just turn my phone on to silent. Um, so what's our year end? Our year end is the 30th of June X8. This first bit of information goes right back to May and June X7. So what's happened is during our year, we have paid a total of 35,750, but 800 pounds of it actually related to last year and they had made an adjustment for that in last year's accounts. So what that means is they must have brought in an extra 800 of expense last year, which would have been an accrued expense. But the corresponding entry has yet to be made. So in other words, the reversal hasn't happened yet. So at the end of June X7, what they would have done is they would have gone right debit the electricity or the admin expenses debit the admin expenses with 800 and credit accrued expenses we now have to reverse that so we've got 800 sitting in accrued expenses as a credit so we'll be debiting accrued expenses and crediting our administrative expenses All right and this is the reversal there it is accrued expenses reversal the date for that it hasn't asked us here but the date for that would have been the first of july x7 the first day of our accounting period right the second thing I do in an accruals or prepayment question is look for the bank figure. So I've got a total of 35,750. Never be tempted to fiddle about with that number. It's got to agree to your cash book and in turn your bank statement. So you've got to put in that figure as it stands. They've got cash book there rather than bank, same difference. The third thing I need to do is look for my closing adjustment. So I reckon that's going to be this second bullet point. An invoice for insurance had been included for 4,500. So it's included in here regarding the 12 months from the 1st of February X8. So that takes me right through to the end of January X9 which is obviously way beyond my year end date of the 30th of June. So I need to figure out how many months I have prepaid. So I'm going to count on my fingers. So I've got July, August, September, October, November, December, January. Right. So I make that seven months that have been prepaid. So calculation. 4,500 is for a whole 12 months. So if I divide that by 12, I get £375 per month. And I just worked out 
been like a seven, I think, or did I say seven months? Yeah, seven months. So times it by seven and you get a figure of 2,625. So what we're saying is that there's 2,625 included in that cash book figure, which needs to come out because it relates to the following year. And that is prepaid expenses. They've been quite kind to us here because they haven't given us um, like, you know, like accrued expenses, for example. But um, I wonder if we thought if it was here, if it would have given us, no, it's given us the same options. So, OK, so um, there we have it. So that step one, the reversal. Step two, the cash book or the bank figure. Step three, the closing adjustment. And then the final step is to work out the balancing figure. So 35750 minus 3425 gives me 32,325. So that represents my admin expense for the year, which is going to get sent to my statement of profit or loss. When it arrives in the statement of profit or loss, it's a debit. Therefore, it's an expense, which is what we would expect. Your final task for the day is to work on the final accounts for AJ, a sole trader who runs a sweet shop. Alongside the sweets, he sells hand-decorated sweet jars. He is considering his inventory of sweets. It is his policy to sell any sweets which he does not consider perfect at 50% of their normal selling price. One of his range is AR sweets. Each packet of sweets retails for £2.50. Now that's their normal selling price. They cost £1.75 to manufacture. That's the cost. We know that inventory is valued at the lower of cost and net realisable value. So remember, cost is what it costs, <laughs> what's already happened, what's been in the past. Net realisable value is in the future. What do we think we can sell it for minus any sort of future costs that are going to be incurred? Right, so each packet of sweets retails for £2.50. They cost £1.75 to manufacture. He currently has 87 packets of these sweets. A box containing 15 packets of sweets was dropped and they were damaged. Right. So 15 boxes, um, so that's per packet. So 15 packets of sweets, sorry, can only be sold at 50% of their normal selling price. So 50% of normal selling price is going to be £1.25 per packet. So £1.25 per packet multiplied by the 15 dodgy boxes or dodgy packets rather that gives me a total of 18 pounds 75 i remember that 18 pounds 75 he has got another 72 packets that are fine right so 72 packets are going to be valued at the cost amount the one pound 75 that gives me 126 pounds i've forgotten the other figure so i'm gonna have to do it again so then i'm going to add on the 15 packets that are now valued at one pound 25 and that gives me a total inventory valuation of 144 pounds 75 the jars retail for 20 pounds each and cost £10 each. So again, net realisable value, 20, cost 10. Three jars are damaged and will cost £40 to repair. They will then be offered for sale at a 10% discount. Right, so net realisable value, what we can sell them for, so three jars will come to £60. 
but we're going to have to incur £40 to repair them. So that will bring the value of those three jars down to, uh, so £20 times three is 60. Take away the 40 is £20. And then with a 10% discount, so 10% of 20 is £2. No, I've done that wrong, I think. Let's try again. Right, they retail for £20 each. Let's knock the 10% off first. So 10% of £20 is obviously £2. So that brings them each one down to £18. So I'm going to do £18 times three gives me £54 altogether for the three damaged jars. I've then got to knock off the £40. So I'm now down to £14 for the three damaged jars. So the question says, what is the total inventory value which should be included in the accounts with regard to these three jars? Right, I must be psychic. That's exactly what I've just worked out, being £14. Now you might have thought... I know this was going through my head initially. Well, is it £40 for each one of the jars to repair or is it for all three? And then I quickly thought, well, it can't be for each one because he then just wouldn't be bothering to do it because £20 take away 40 would, you know, just be pointless. So then I concluded quite quickly in my in my head as I was talking to you that it must be um, all three was costing £40 to repair.